Kia ora, this is Arun Jacob, your friendly and frank licensed New Zealand immigration advisor as well as education advisor, making my first video uh, after uh, the new government in New Zealand has been announced. Uh, it is now going to be a coalition government between the New Zealand Labour Party and uh, New Zealand First, which is another uh, political party, and the Greens, which is of course another political party. So it's going to be a coalition of uh, three uh, different uh, uh, political parties that's going to come together and form the new government uh, and uh, by coming together and getting more numbers than uh, the national party uh, which was ruling New Zealand for the last nine years uh, this is going to set in motion a whole new governance and a whole new system for the next three years in New Zealand. Now as uh, uh, most of you are aware who follow my work uh, I make videos pertaining to anything that will impact upon uh, migration to New Zealand or uh, international education to New Zealand. And uh, I've been getting quite a lot of queries uh, from people who follow my work uh, and are also prospective uh, clients who are planning to come to New Zealand either as migrants or as international students. Uh, seeking my opinion about uh, what's going to be uh, the impact uh, on uh, especially international students uh, uh, after the formation of this new government. Now, uh, point number one, the government is not yet formed. It is still in process. They have just announced, uh, that is, uh, the three parties said, yeah, we're going to come together and work together. So there is still a, uh, a process to be followed before uh, the prime minister is going to be um, uh, sworn in. Uh, and then subsequently, the ministers uh, of cabinet will be sworn in. So initial movements have happened, but nothing concrete has occurred yet. Um, the positive uh, thing sort of this whole thing is that we're going to have a really young uh, prime minister who is below 40 uh, and a lady as well. So we're going to have possibly one of the youngest prime ministers uh, uh, anywhere in the world. And that is a great uh, advantage uh, for a young, uh, vibrant nation like New Zealand because uh, the world looks at us for leadership and a lot of uh, things. And uh, to see that young people are also recognized for the talent and and uh, respected and trusted to run the entire country at a young age uh, i think is a tremendous uh, pat on the back for uh, the community as a whole that lives here in new zealand so that's a very very positive thing now will three parties come together and work coherently and be able to create a successful uh, partnership and take the country uh, in the right direction only time will tell and uh, i'm no predictor of anything other than it's just another person who lives in New Zealand and enjoys this country for what it is along with my family. I've established a successful business and I contribute and do my best for uh, this country. So I do uh, hope that it works out well for us. As a business person uh, and a licensed immigration advisor, uh, 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 I should probably be a little, uh, you know, put up by the fact that uh, a combination of parties has come together that has clearly has had a what can be perceived as an anti-immigration uh, slant uh, during their uh, uh, campaign and also in pretty much uh, all their public sayings. So this, this particular government is going to be led by the um, uh, Labour uh, uh, Party, uh, which has been the main opposition party for the last three years. And they have had a very clear line in their uh, uh, campaign saying that they're going to cut down on uh, immigration. The second dominant party in this coalition, which is New Zealand First, has also uh, has always been perceived as an anti-immigration party, uh, although I think it's a little harsh to name them as anti-immigrant. What they say is that we need uh, immigrants, but we need uh, good quality ones, and we will focus on the quantity uh, on the quality uh, rather than bringing in a quantity of uh, migrants. Uh, the third party, which is Greens, has got a reasonably uh, pro-immigration uh, sort of a stance. They actually uh, intend to open up New Zealand and welcome more refugees from different part of the, parts of the world. And they believe that New Zealanders should go out and do a bit more for those people suffering in different parts of the world. So there are these three parties, uh, Labour clearly stating in their manifestos uh, that they will cut out on migration, um, cut down on migration. Uh, uh, New Zealand first saying that they would like to limit the uh, uh, migration to more reasonable levels and uh, Greens which are you know the like the minor uh, partner in this coalition but they are kind of pro-immigration and also pro-refugees. Now will this really affect international students? Uh, 
I think it will affect the international students who have been uh, looking at New Zealand as a easy uh, entry destination uh, and having been sold very low quality uh, courses uh, by uh, low quality agents uh, in their respective countries. And I do believe that that particular segment of students is going to get affected. I actually spent uh, the last hour, hour and a half uh, researching the uh, manifestos of these different parties. Uh, bear in mind, it is not uh, official policy yet. It is just only still manifestos. And uh, obviously, there will be a whole uh, process of checks and balances before uh, the uh, sentences or the uh, desirable statement of the manifesto goes on to become actual law and enters the operational manual of immigration department and becomes uh, something uh, as an instruction by which we all will have to then adhere to. But at this point, uh, I think the message is very clear and the message is that the emphasis is going to be on quality rather than quantity of migration. So which means that there is going to be a revamp of especially of the uh, international education industry because I uh, although it is probably going to affect uh, me as an individual business person, I really uh, am not perturbed too much about it because my organization has always uh, catered to very, very high quality students who have come into very good quality courses and who have uh, gone on to prove their uh, merit and their um, uh, usefulness to the society and to the workforce in New Zealand. But there has also been an underbelly of the international education uh, industry that has developed in New Zealand over uh, the last few years and uh, I think to a certain extent it became like a wild uh, bush that kind of grew out of control a little bit and they were uh, especially private providers who would crop up every other day and offer uh, all I can call them as very insignificant and very silly courses which really didn't help either the student uh, nor did it help the workforce in the proper way. So I think uh, all the parties are uh, what they're saying is that uh, they're not saying we don't need migration uh, or we don't need international students. They're saying that we need uh, both uh, good quality migrants as well as good quality international students. Everybody understands that there is a need for migration in this country because without uh, more additional workforce being added to the economy, it's going to stall. So everybody knows that there are not adequate number of people in New Zealand and that this, this workforce needs to come from somewhere and either they can come in as skilled workers uh, uh, directly or they can come in uh, as international students and then pathway themselves into work and into uh, eventual residency. So nobody is denying that particular pathway. But I think what everybody is uh, quite concerned about, especially the uh, new parties which are going to be in power, uh, new Labour and New Zealand First, have been very concerned about the number of low quality courses being offered to very low quality students, which in turn uh, kind of became like a backdoor entry towards migration in New Zealand, which in turn uh, push down the uh, wage levels within the country and which in you know in turn affects uh, a whole lot of society in general so I do not think uh, this government is going to be anti-immigrant I think it's very very harsh to already start labeling uh, uh, this government anti-immigrant I think they're going to streamline this dramatic growth that uh, New Zealand has had in uh, uh, migration and international education over the last few years and uh, there is a big uh, uh, mass of uh, opportunity that has been created and I think what this uh, government is going to do is kind of uh, you know, trim off some of the edges, trim off some of the unwanted branches and then make it into a more robust structure, into a more robust tree. So I do not think people, uh, either uh, skilled migrants or international students who have that quality and who especially will come for higher courses uh, like a bachelor's or a postgraduate diploma or a master's or a PhD, I do not think there is anything to worry at all. In fact, because you are the kind of people New Zealand still needs, and that's what both the uh, uh, parties and you know uh, uh, and the future government is going to be saying as well. So uh, I don't think there is any reason for panic. Uh, I think that it is going to work out just fine. Uh, if anybody should be panicking, it should be people like uh, myself who are in the immigration industry, and it can pretty much affect my uh, my entire future uh, as somebody. But I, I mean, look at me, not a. Uh, worry in the world because uh, as an organization, AGV services are always catered to very high quality clients and uh, it is a matter of pride for us to see our clients and our students now engaged in uh, uh, good uh, positions all across New Zealand and not doing those low level unskilled kind of jobs but these are people 
who make us very proud and working for some of the best organizations in the country, earning very good salary, paying their taxes and also being socially active and contributing to the growth of New Zealand as a, as a multicultural society and a country that the entire world looks up to. So bottom line, not a problem if you have good quality and good quality is defined by uh, having uh, verifiable uh, funds uh, to get your visa, having impressive English, uh, having the sincerity of purpose and having a good academic uh, and work track record. That's pretty much it. If you notice, I said verifiable funds, which is we, uh, impressive English, which is I, uh, sincerity of purpose, which is S, and uh, A is academic uh, or work track record, which is uh, V-I-S-A. So if you have these four, you will get your visa and I don't think you have a lot to worry about. Continue to speak to my team, uh, AJV Services, and uh, we will gladly work with you and bring you into the right courses, in the right colleges, in the right city, and ensure you get into your right careers and also go on to become the right citizens for New Zealand. That's a promise from all of us, uh, from myself and the rest of my team. So stay cool, think New Zealand, think new, think young with Jacinda Ardern as our latest prime minister and uh, do not be per per perturbed by all the rumor mills that will go around and around saying New Zealand is shutting its doors on migrants and stuff like that. That's a whole lot of nonsense. New Zealand simply cannot afford to shut its doors on migrants. Uh, but what it would certainly want to do is welcome good, solid, high quality migrants through those doors and ensure that this country keeps growing well uh, as a society and also stands proudly amongst the community of nations. So sorry about that long speech, but I thought it was important to uh, clarify uh, a lot of doubts that have been cropping up with the formation of the new government. So all the very best. Look forward to working with you and welcoming you into New Zealand. Uh, please share my videos with your family and friends as always. Kiara.